Hey guys, missed you. So it's been a while since I've done a tutorial like this. Today I decided to make a photo editing tutorial. Now this is something that I don't do a lot of, mainly because it's more photography oriented. Um, I do a lot of photography, but it's not something that I focus on this account. I, I mean, I would love, I would love it if it could be photography focused, but it's more art related. I think it's art <laughs> related because I make a lot of different content, but still. But, you know, I thought, you know, I also make a lot of concept art, right? I make Photoshop tutorials and stuff like that. And to be honest with you, this actually really isn't far off. And if you're trying to get into concept art, landscape art and stuff like that, the tips that I give today might help you, I think, because I, I do feel like I have a lot to say with this topic, photography. I mean, mainly because I've been doing this for, for a while. On my Instagram, I share a lot of photography on my stories because it's something that I like to do, right? And a lot of people were actually wondering how I turn a sort of boring, gloomy photo to a more beautiful, breathtaking, you know, sort of photo, right? I wasn't really thinking of doing a tutorial about it, but a lot of people were actually requesting that I make a tutorial like this. So I decided, you know what, why not? I'm just gonna do it. And if you guys like this sort of videos, um, I will definitely make more in the future because I do have a little bit of knowledge when it comes to photography and photo editing. So let me know what you guys think. So without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, as you can see here, I have a couple photos um, from a trip that I did to a lake that is here in Spain. It's actually pretty far from where I live, but the place was pretty cool. We spent the night there, took some night photography, which is something that I'm not really <laughs> good at yet because I haven't gotten the opportunity to do a lot of it, but I did take a couple of them. As you can see here, something like this. Uh, I'm still struggling with focusing on the stars, but hopefully I get better at it. This is a couple photos that I took from that day. Uh, we also stayed for sunrise. As you can see here, this is a sunrise photo of the place. Now, personally, what I would recommend if you are going to take photos is you take them either sunrise or sunset because that helps you to work a lot more with with the lighting and the glows and the sun and all that that's mostly what i personally like to take photos of sunrise and sunsets i feel like are the best times to take photos not only because it's the most beautiful time of day but also because it helps you work a lot more with the lighting and the sun and the glows so that's what i like to take photos of most of the time this um as you can see here the sunrise now most of these are not edited i just edited a couple of them now we are going to work in lightroom first and then we'll work in photoshop after because that's how i personally like to edit my photos now you could in theory edit everything in, in Photoshop because all the features that you have in Lightroom, you have in Photoshop. The only problem with that, I would say is, hold on, let me let me show you actually. All right, so I've opened Photoshop and I'm just gonna pick, I don't know, let's just pick a random photo here. All right, let's, I don't know, let's pick this one. I'm just gonna drag it into Photoshop. Now these are raw photos. Raw photos, for those of you who don't know, um, have a lot more detail in them it's a photo format that is not compressed and has a lot more information in the highlights and in the shadows and helps you a lot to get back information from a certain photo now personally i would recommend you always always if you have a camera always take your photos in raw because you there's no to be honest with you i don't think there's there's a reason for you to take them in JPEG because that's a more compressed file and you can't really retrieve information from those sort of photos. And if you wanna have the raw photos in JPEG, you could easily just, you know, export it into JPEG. So personally, I don't find any reason for you to take photos in JPEG. So I personally recommend you always take photos in RAW because you ha have a lot to work with. It's, it's the max quality that you can get from a, a photo. The good thing about Photoshop, once you pop a RAW photo right into Photoshop, it automatically pops this um, page that has all the features of Lightroom, basically. So you can, you know, work on the highlights, contrast, exposure. You have all of the features, you have curves, you have all of it, right? Effects. You can put grain, vignette, all of it. One problem that I find with this though is that once you, you know you're done with messing around with it, and then you click done. Okay, rather than done, don't click done, click open. All right, that's that's what's gonna open the file. You can't really go back to it. You know, it's, everything is pretty much baked into it. You could, in theory, go back to filter, camera raw filter, and then it, the the window will pop up again. But it's not the same. You know, it's not what we just messed around with it's like an entirely new filter so i always personally prefer to just work straight up in um lightroom and then once you know you edit the photo in lightroom you can just 
transfer it into Photoshop, but that file is not lost. It's not sort of baked. What you transfer to Photoshop though is baked, but you always have the edited file in Lightroom always. So that's why I always like to do it in Lightroom first and then afterwards I'll transfer it into Photoshop. Now I will show you guys how I normally work with both programs because it's really easy. All you have to do if you're editing a photo, you just go to photo, edit in, and then you just go to Photoshop if you have Photoshop installed. And that's pretty much how you, you would work with one program to the next. And then once you save it, whatever you save here, it saves automatically in Photoshop. Now Adobe really thought this through on, you know, using different programs because photographers always, you know, work with Lightroom or Photoshop and whatnot. So they've made it easy, you know, to transfer from one program to the other. So that's my workflow. All right, that was a long rant, but I feel like it's important for people to understand, you know, different workflows, benefits of each. I mean, if you prefer to just work in Photoshop, you could. A lot of people might actually do that, but I like to work on both Lightroom and Photoshop, especially because, you know, Lightroom is very, really easy to use, very user friendly. Um, but when you go to Photoshop, you know, it's, it's a lot more, a little bit more complicated. So I only use Photoshop when I want to manipulate the photo. Um, but if I want to retouch any colors or exposure or anything, I do everything in Lightroom. All right. So without further ado, let's get right into editing a photo. So, all right. So out of all the photos, the one that I think I'm going to edit, this is an, another edit for example let's see this is the before and this is this is the before and this is the after of one of the edits but there's not much here right the, it, it's mainly just uh, adjusting the exposure or adjusting the colors and that's pretty much it I didn't really do much else to the photo one photo though that I really messed with was this one as you can see here this is the color graded one and then in Photoshop what I did is I added a Sun glow or flare or whatever you want to call it. Now this is a more creative edit where I messed a little bit around with the sun and it's not entirely how I shot it. So I thought I would pick this this photo to edit in this tutorial today. So let's see, this is the before once I color graded it, but the completely unedited photo is this version. So let's get right into it. You know what, let's actually delete this, remove photo, and we're gonna start from, from scratch, all right? And then this, I'm just gonna completely reset. And now we've got our raw photo. So let's get right into the photo editing. As I mentioned before, I'd recommend you edit a raw photo because you have a lot more information on the really dark shadows and really blown out highlights and you can recover a lot more information from a raw photo. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't edit a JPEG. A lot of people still edit JPEGs and to be honest with you, it actually turned out really good, but you don't have that range of, you know, information that you can recover. So I would recommend you always shoot in raw. If you're shooting to edit, I would recommend you go to raw because raw has all the information possible that you could need. But if you're just shooting and you're just going to use that, I think you could just easily use a JPEG. You just got to know what you want and what you're going to do. So let's get right into it. Okay. So before messing with the colors, what I always like to do is expose it properly, right? I could either increase the exposure a little bit, but with exposure, you're exposing everything. You know, sometimes you don't want to expose the entire thing because sometimes the highlights are really exposed, but you do want to increase the shadows. Sometimes the difference between the shadows and and the highlights are very drastic. So sometimes you don't want to mess with the exposure, it increases brightness and darkness of the entire image. Sometimes, for example, here, the, the, the shadows are, are, you want to increase the shadows, but you don't want to blow out the highlights, right? Like here, here. So I normally increase the shadows. I could still increase the exposure a little bit, but as you can see, it's starting to blow out a little bit. Something you want to be really careful with. And if you want to retrieve some, some information from the highlights, you could just reduce the highlights and you would get a, some information from the, the sky, for example, and all that. Sometimes I like to mess with the contrast a little bit, add a little bit more contrast. But as you can see, it's darkening a whole lot more the shadows. So I still like to increase the shadows a little bit. Blacks, maybe increase the blacks so it's not too contrasty. Whites, maybe... No, I think I'm just gonna leave that. In the exposure, you could mess around with the, in this part, but a lot of people just like to work with curves. I like to use both, to be honest. I don't have any preference. For the most part, I do like to have like um, 
faded blacks because that gives a more cinematic feel to it and the highlights a little bit so i always like to have an s curve if you mess a lot with the exposure here you don't want to have the s curve very drastic so as you can see here the s curve is very very minimal like very it's not a drastic s for example if you didn't touch anything here um you could have the s a little bit more drastic you know have the highlights a little bit more and then the contrast the, the the shadows a little bit more down and then you have a more natural contrast but since we already messed with it there uh we don't want to mess with what we've already done we reduce the blacks um i do want there to be a little bit of contrast but i i want the information of the shadows to pop out a little bit more so that's what i'm trying to achieve here you always want to see what you started with and then where you're with now because you always want to you know have perspective right you don't want to be too into it so every now and then i like to see before and after one thing that i'm noticing now is that the horizon is a little bit slanted right so i want to rotate it a little bit so that the horizon is straight i still feel like the shadows are a little bit too dark and as you can see here it's actually 100 percent. you can't go past 100 percent. so sometimes what i like to do is use the gradient filter uh, gradient filter yeah and focus on a specific spot and the settings completely start from scratch again and now you can increase the shadows a little bit more if you want to but as you can see here the it's not a whole lot different so um yeah i'm just gonna not mess with it a whole lot yeah i'm also going to add a gradient to the sky because i always like like a gradient in the sky if there's not a defined gradient i always like to add it by the way the gradient is this button right here okay in case you didn't know and then what I can do is just reduce the exposure there. I don't know if you can, yeah, as you can see that it's starting to add a little bit of a gradient to the sky. And I always like that, you know, I always like that gradient. So whenever I can, I like to add it. For the exposure, this is how we started. It's actually really, really dark. And then now we're here. Me personally, whenever I take photos, I always like to underexpose rather than overexpose. For the most part, you can recover information in the shadows but a lot of the times you can't recover information in the highlights so for the most part i like to underexpose if you guys want me to make a photography tutorial let me know um on how i normally take photos and the settings that i normally use but there are a lot of tutorials out there that i feel like can explain way way better than i could ever do it so yeah definitely just search online you'll definitely find a lot of tutorials on how to take photos you know what um i think i'm going to increase the exposure a little bit um and then once you've done that as you can see, the highlights are a little bit blown out. You can reduce the highlights and the highlights are not blown. So that's a little trick. If you want to increase the shadows, you can increase the exposure and then reduce the highlights so that, you know, it compensates with, with the shadows. Um, but as you can see here, the shadows are a little, a little bit blown out, just a tiny bit. I would probably reduce the shadows so that there's a little bit of contrast. That's, that's pretty good, to be honest. Exposure, I'm not going to mess... A lot more with it i think we're good with, with the exposure so once i'm done with the exposure i go right into the colors i always like to mess with the blue first because there's always a lot of blue in the image so i go to hue go to blue and the blues i always like to take it to teal mainly because i don't know I, I like to work with teal and orange but if you want a certain color profile i don't know if there's a certain photographer that you really like and you like his photos you can copy you know how he normally um edits but how i normally edit is working with cold and warm if there's a cold color like blue i always like to lean it towards the teal and if there's a warm color like an orange or a red or maybe even yellow i always like to push it towards the orangey sort of warm colors just so that there's a contrast because those two colors always complement each other that's how i always edit the blues towards the teal and for the most part i always also like to desaturate it desaturated the blues so teal and then desaturated the greens i always like to make them a little bit warmer as well so you can see you can either make them like super green or more towards a warmer green i always like to take it towards a more warm green just so that it works with the color profile yellows i like to go to the warmer side as i mentioned so it's more towards the red as you can see it's either you can do it really red or like more towards green which i don't know why you would go there but who knows maybe you'd want it but i always like to go more towards the reddish so there's a, gonna be a little bit of a red there orange yep orange shift it towards the reddish part not too much though you don't want it to start looking you know weird <laughs> what else purple do we have purple in the image no we do not magenta 
there's no magenta in the image. All right, for the most part, that's pretty much it for the colors. And then the highlights, as I mentioned, I like to work with orange and teal. So I like to make the highlights warm. So I lean more towards the orangey sort of side. And then the shadows, I make them sort of teal. And then with all of that, what I like to do is desaturate the entire thing just a little bit, not too much. And that's pretty much how I normally color grade my images. Now, as you can see, for example, the ground, I feel like it's a little bit, the hue is a little bit too red, so I'll probably shift the orange more towards the yellow. And then, yeah, maybe work with the yellows. You know what, I actually prefer it if it's more orangey because it feels like it's more reddish. You know, once you edit a lot, you're very sensitive to colors, exposure, and you always know what's wrong, like even just a little bit in the image. It's just something that comes with practice. You know, the more you, you edit, the more you're sensitive to this uh, sort of things. I also like to mess with the um, white balance a little bit. If I feel like the image isn't warm enough, I like warm images. Sometimes just shift it more towards the warm. Some people prefer colder images. I mean, oof, no, that's, that's too much. But yeah, you could shift it towards the colder image totally depends on what you're trying to achieve but I always like my images to be warm especially if it's like a lake or nature all of that you know I always like to highlight the Sun the warmness sort of feel to it you know now for example I feel like maybe the ground is a little bit too desaturated so I'm gonna saturate the the orange in the ground a little bit yeah and I think that's about it. Now you could go in and do cropping. You could crop it to whatever ratio you want, like this ratio, for example, is like the cinematic ratio. Totally depends on what images you're trying to create, right? If it's for thumbnail, you want 16 by nine crop. If it's for Instagram, you want a vertical, for example, you would want to crop it like this, right? Four by, by five crop is the maximum length, vertical length, of an Instagram photo. If you want to highlight just the, the tree, you can do that and then you can crop it like that. But I'm just gonna leave it as it is, to be honest. How it was was fine. Right now, I, I don't have a preference. For example, in this image, I want as much information to be captured as possible. Like I want the mountains to be captured. I want the floor here to be captured, all of this detail. So I, I'm just gonna leave it as it is. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess with it, I'm not gonna crop it. That's about it for the color grading. Now you could also go here down to the sharpening, details, noise. A lot of people like to add a little bit of noise. And then right at the very bottom, you can add a little bit of vignette. I always like to add vignette, even if it's just a little bit, just to add a central focus you don't have to you don't want to but yeah that's uh that's about it the color grading and exposure part now what we're gonna do is go to photoshop and add um the sun glow and we're gonna highlight some glows in the ground as well and all of that but we're gonna do all that in photoshop so once you're done with the edit go to photo edit in and then photoshop if you have both installed you can you know work with both so now we're in photoshop and it's color graded the only bad thing about this is like it's a baked file right you can't really go back to the the settings and whatnot it's like it's a it's a file it's like a baked image so in photoshop what i normally like to do is if there are anything that you want to remove for example you just you know you just remove it like i don't know if i want to remove this stone there, it's gone, you know, stuff like that. Like if you want to remove any any details and whatnot, it, you can easily do it in Photoshop. I don't want that. I don't want to remove anything. But sometimes I do like to, for example, replace the sky. For example, if this sky wasn't as clear and as neat as it is, sometimes I like to replace it. If you want me to make a tutorial on how to replace sky, let me know. But I think Photoshop has a feature where it automatically changes the sky. I normally like to do it manually, but I think there's a feature for that. All I want to do now is change the concept of the image because one thing that I thought about once taking this image is I really liked the highlights on the ground and to highlight that I think it would be cool if the Sun was present for the most part I always like the Sun to be present in my images so that's what I'm gonna do so for example here in this folder I have a lot of different sort of Sun glares Sun glows you know I usually like to have a whole collection of you know different sun glows sun flares just in case I need them so yeah I always import it and then all I would do is just mess around with the layer effect for the most part I think lighten might be the best option to be honest so I'm just gonna 
put this right here and just like that we've got a sun that's going through the trees now obviously if you want to make it a little bit bigger you could point that there or maybe here i don't know no not there because you can't be in front of the mountain so these are the sort of things that i normally keep in mind it has to be right on top there one thing that makes putting the sun there acceptable is that the highlights on the ground it is more towards the right side so the sun is coming from the left side of the image but if it's not too noticeable people don't really notice but it is it's something that you have to be conscious about you can't just add a sun there just because you feel like it you know you have to understand how the image is composed how the sun is hitting the ground all of that to make the image make sense as i said the sun is coming from the left side of the image but you could pass it like it's coming from in front of the image mainly because the difference isn't too drastic all right so with that now we can start messing around with i don't know you could for example colorize it and then work with the hue I want it a little bit warm, so I'm just gonna make it like that, something like that. And then maybe you could, if, if you want to increase the saturation, but I'm not going to do that. I'm gonna increase, decrease it maybe a little bit. That's it for, for the sun. What I also like to do is add a glow to it. To add glows, what I like to do is change the layer mode to linear dodge add, and then the brush mode to be linear dodge add as well. What that does is that you're adding on top of what you're adding already. So that's how I normally like to add glows. And then with that, you can just make a really dark saturated color. Um, you know what? I'm going to hide the sun just in case. And then we're just going to add it. As you can see here, once you start adding, it starts to add a glow to the image. Let's add the sun, see how it looks. And then since we don't want to lose the detail of the sun that we did, you could just with the eraser just remove it or you could just leave it how it is totally depends on what you want to do and that's how i normally add a sun um it's not too difficult and what i normally like to do also is since they are highlights i also like to make them stand out as well so i like to make the highlights glow Oof, a little bit here i'm gonna have to change the layer then you dodge add there something like that like just make the highlights stand out just a little bit now this part can be a little bit tedious but i don't know i just like i just like to do that you know so anywhere that there's highlights i like to make them stand out a little bit now this part of the process is um totally optional totally depends on you um you don't have to do this part if you don't want to it also adds a sort of dreamy look which i really like that's why i like adding it and yeah and if, i don't know if you feel like it's a lot you could reduce the opacity but you want to keep that in a separate layer though anyway uh and that's about it that's how i would normally edit a photo now once you're done with this you could just save it Command S or Control S, and it automatically goes to Lightroom and creates another version. As you can see here, there are two versions, the Photoshop version and then the Lightroom version. Uh, so yeah, you have both in Lightroom. Um, as I mentioned, this is a little bit more edited than I would normally. Normally I would just color grade it or whatnot, maybe remove some stuff from it in Photoshop, but I don't add a whole lot to it. But sometimes I feel like, oh, maybe a sun glow might actually add a lot to the image. For example, I don't know. Let's see another one that I kind of not really did a whole lot to, but more towards this sort of editing. Yeah, it's probably here. Yeah. All right, so these are some drone shots. And as you can see here, for example, drone shots, uh, I feel like they're not the easiest <laughs> photos to deal with because for example, my drone, it takes raw photos, but they're very grainy and it's not the best quality. So it usually takes a lot more editing, in my opinion. There are a lot of drones that don't need a lot of work, but mine does. So let's see. Okay, so this is the before. As you can see, it's really, really dark. And it's like it was actually horizontal. As you can see, this is how it was before. And I cropped it vertical for, for Instagram. And then I messed around with it. And this is what was the color grading. And then in Photoshop, as you can see here, I added glow to the right side. I didn't add a sun though, 
but I added a glow. Since the sun was coming on the, on the right side of the image, I decided, you know what, might be cool if there was a glow spilling out on the right side of the image. And as you can see here, I also added a boat. There was a boat when I was shooting, but it wasn't where I wanted it to be. So I, you know what, I'm like, I'm just gonna add it in post. And it actually turned out pretty good. So that's how I normally edit photos. These are decisions that I make that I feel could enhance the photo. Some people might prefer it just like this, but I like to add a little bit more in, in Photoshop just to enhance the photo, you know? And also there's replacing skies. Um, let's see, I have an example. This, I think it was this one. Yeah, it was this one. As you can see, the sky was really, really cloudy and I didn't really like that. So I replaced this guy. And this was from a photo that I actually took. A good thing about taking photos is that I, I would per personally recommend you take a lot of sky photos just in case you need them in an edit or something. Uh, yeah, this one, I think it was from this image. Yeah, it was from this one. So I just took the sky from this one and then replaced that and put it in this one. Um, and then I stretched it out a little bit. The good thing with sky is that even if you stretch it or warp it or whatnot, it still doesn't look unnatural because there are a lot of different shapes in skies. So anyway, I stretched it and then I put the sun, the, the lighting part, the, which is the middle, I put it on the left side because that's pretty much where the light is coming from in the image. And then what I did is I added a glow to the left side of the image. That's about it for the video. Yeah, there are a lot of different ways to edit and I think it really depends on, on the situation and being able to adapt to the image, I think is important. Um, as you can see here, I also added a glow to the left side. I like glows, <laughs> I don't know if you figured that out yet. But whenever there's a sun that is coming from a certain direction, I like to add the glow to that place to enhance the lighting. So as I mentioned in the beginning, I always like to take photos of sunrise and sunsets because you can enhance the light in a whole lot more in those situations. But as you can see here, I've taken a, a couple photos of skies. If I want, for example, someday, I might want a cloudy sky. I thought this sky was actually pretty interesting, uh, this cloud, because you know, as you can see, the, the pattern of the clouds here are actually pretty interesting. So I just thought I would take it. I recommend you take as many photos as you can, especially of clouds, nature, because you can really reuse them afterwards in, in Photoshop and all that. That's one tip that I personally would, would give you guys. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoy it. Hopefully this video isn't too long. Um, a lot of people actually prefer long videos for some reason. So uh, I don't mind doing them if you guys like it, especially because, you know, there's a lot more information in the video. And if you're really into this sort of topics, they're worth watching the entire thing, um, especially because I have a lot of things to talk about. Even if I rant, I think there are things that are important to keep in mind. And I like to make tutorials as complete as possible because whenever I make a tutorial, I, I don't just want to make it a section, you know? There are things that people need to grasp in order to know what you're doing in that certain tutorial. So let me know what you guys think. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know what other tutorials you want me to make. It can be photography. I would actually love if I could make a lot more photography content. Technically, it's not a photography account, but you know, photography is art, right? Um, and I think a lot of people will agree with me. So, and if you like this video, definitely give this video a big thumbs up guys uh, it helps me a lot to know that you guys don't like my videos by the way i also made a concept art video where i went in depth more into photoshop it's not photography though but it does mess with photography a little bit if you want to check it out i'll leave the link in the card and also at the end screen uh end card of this video so yep i'll see you guys in the next video bye, -bye.